how to model this 10 inch cast iron skillet which happens to be the piece of equipment that I use more than any other in my kitchen. Starting with a blank document and making sure to get our units correct we see that every piece of geometry we do in SOLIDWORKS starts with a two-dimensional sketch. In this case just a simple circle to start us off. We use sketch relations and dimensions to fully define the geometry and then apply three-dimensional features like this drafted extrude. Making sure to draft this outward at a 20 degree angle, we've got a good starting point. We're going to add a three-quarter inch fillet to the bottom edge to represent the rounded portion at the bottom of the pan. Next, we need to hollow out this volume. We're going to do this with a revolve sketch, and instead of making it from scratch, we'll use the offset tool to create new geometry off of the already existing geometry from previous features. We see, simply move it to the inside, and we automatically get the new radius calculated for us. Next, we add a center line and close off the contour just the way we want it. Making sure to revolve this around the correct axis. Whoops, that's not right. There we go. We get a nice cut revolve. Next, it's time to make the handle. We're going to make this as simple as possible just a circle and two tangent lines. Again, sketch relations and dimensions are used to fully define this geometry. Finally, the trim tool is used to slice out the line segment in the middle to create a single closed contour, and we can extrude this down 0.4 inches into the middle of our skillet. Now we're left with a little wedge of material in the middle that really doesn't belong. It would have made more sense to add that feature before adding the cut. No worries, we can simply reorder our features so that the cut happens after the handle's been added. That's better. Next it's time to add some more fillets. We want some rather large fillets, an inch and a half radius, where the handle meets the pan. And then we're going to use a full round fillet to round off the outside edge of the handle. simply picking on faces of all sides and SOLIDWORKS calculates the radius for us. Now that rolls inward a little bit and we need to create a rim anyway. To make this easier we change to a wireframe view and add a very simple sketch that we're going to revolve around. We actually don't need any dimensions in this sketch. We're going to reference the height of that one blue line to be collinear with the bottom of the other handle. Simply add another center line and we'll be able to revolve this. That looks good. Next, we're going to add another sketch to create the helper handle. And for this one, since we have a symmetric shape to create, we're going to create a center line and turn on dynamic mirror entities. Now when we create our lines, they'll be reproduced on the other side of the mirror line. We'll also copy the inner diameter to close off that shape and trim away the excess geometry. A couple of more dimensions will define this geometry for us fully. We'll use the offset tool once again to create the hole in the middle. 
at a constant offset from the existing shape. Extruding this down again. Looks a little bit boxy, so we'll round it out with a fillet. And there's no need to pick every single one of the edges necessary because SolidWorks is going to offer us some quick groups of edges that might be the ones that we want to pick. So we'll use that to pick 10 different edges all at once and round them all off. Finally, we need to create the hole in the end of the handle, but we want to make our sketch halfway in the middle of that handle. So we're going to create a new sketch plane that sits at the midplane of the two existing surfaces and create a sketch there. We'll see why in a moment. We wake up the center point and make another very simple teardrop shape here. Some quick dimensions and sketch relations later and we'll have a fully defined shape. And finally use the trim tool to trim it down to have a single closed contour. Here we're going to use an extruded cut coming both directions from the midplane and we'll add a 45 degree draft angle going outward to create the unique shape of the hole in this pan's handle. Lastly, adding some small fillets to those edges will smooth that geometry out and make it look just like the real thing. Our final step is to define the material. And by telling SolidWorks that this part is made out of cast iron, we can then get accurate properties, either for simulation or just to take the mass properties, like this. And as we discussed in class, we might want to add some custom materials for the particular blends of metal. We also took a look at a little bit of simulation. Here we'll see how quick and easy it is to set up a simple linear static study to test the strength of the handle. We'll simply add a fixture on the bottom of the pan as if we're clamping it in place and add a vertical force near the end of the handle. 200 pounds should do it. Whoops. Better watch out for my units. That's better. Simulation, when run, is going to break this geometry down into a large number of small tetrahedral elements and brute force solve the equations necessary to get a solution. Here we see an exaggerated displacement giving us an intuitive idea of how the handle bends and where the maximum stresses are. These might be areas to add a little bit of material to make the pan stronger. Another example I wasn't able to show in class is a drop test study. Here taking a look at what happens if the pan were dropped from a height of 1000 millimeters right down on the tip of the helper handle. Here an animation shows us how the stresses propagate through the material as it's dropped. <laughs> 